What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode. In this episode, I'm just going to do a quick overview, well, hopefully it's quick, of Elementary OS with Freya. Now, this is going to be my favorite Linux installation, uh, Linux distribution, should I say, uh, by a long shot, believe it or not. Uh, the other installations that I kind of jump between, uh, Linux Mint is one of them. Sometimes I'll just throw on Ubuntu, and then I'll put on the XFC desktop, uh, XFCE desktop, and kind of mess with it that way. But for some reason, or I'll jump on Arch Linux as well, but for some reason I keep bouncing back to elementary OS, and that's just because I love it. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful disrupt um, version of Ubuntu, or sorry, yeah, I guess of Ubuntu, you can say that. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go into the system tools real quick, and I'm gonna show you what the backside of it, or what I have actually installed. So if I go to about, you're gonna see that I have elementary OS 0.3 Freya on a 64 bit, and it is built on 14.04 of Ubuntu. Uh, as you can see what my hardware looks like, it's very, very low end. That's because I am actually using an Acer C720 Chromebook. I've completely remaced, uh, sorry, erased Chrome OS and I have only have Linux running on this computer and I'm not going back anytime soon. I did reinstall Chrome OS about two weeks ago and I still have been meaning up to write up a little write up about that, which I'll throw in the uh, description when I get it done of why I've decided to stick with Linux over Chrome OS of the functionality of using a laptop and so on, but that's another story. So getting back to why I like it just a little bit over the other Linux distributions is just how clean it looks. You're going to see on the bottom right here, this is going to be the plank comes pre-installed. Uh, apps can just be dragged and dropped right into it straight from your application menu as you see right here. Speaking of the application menu, you're going to notice on the top left hand corner, I have two views to look at. This four box on the very top is, as you say, view as a grid, where I can see all my programs dash applications in one screen. When I click it this way, it categorizes it the way we would normally see a menu. So getting back out of here, looking in the system settings, you're gonna see that this is what it, you know, pretty much all the control that you have on the backside of your computer, which is very nice. Uh, in the applications, this is just where you're gonna come and pick and choose what applications you wanna do what. So when you're trying to uh, click on a link or click on something to uh, open up the web browser. It's going to open up Firefox browser for me. I have Chrome OS and Midori as well installed. Midori is a very lightweight web browser that will come pre-installed with every elementary OS. Freya, pretty sure Luna as well. Uh, getting to startup, this is where you're going to pick and choose what applications you want to automatically have start as soon as you turn on your computer. Now, of course, you can just turn them on and off. So I can add it to the list here and I can still turn it off. So I don't have to worry about that. Uh, coming into my notifications, this is going to be where you get these little notifications on the top right hand side. So on the far right side, you're going to see this is where I can change pretty much everything, shut down my computer, suspend it, log out. The basic menu bar. Notifications will be next, which I only have Geary popped up. Geary means that it's going to be for my Geary down here. It's an email application that should come pre-installed from your elementary OS as well. And you can change if you want just bubbles pop up or sound notifications. I'm not a big fan of sound notifications, so I have them all turned off because I just have music and stuff always playing in the background. Uh, coming to my regional lit, that's kind of self-explanatory. Security and privacy is a very neat option, a very clean option as well. You can see my privacy mode is turned on. You can stop the video right here and kind of read that if you'd like to. It's just pretty much stating that it doesn't save anything in the background. Lock screen. That's how we're going to lock our screen if we want it to turn or we want it to lock as soon as our screen turns off and we need to ask for a password for security. Firewall. Now you need to unlock this with your administrative password. So when I click this, it should ask for it, which it is. And then you can come in here and change your your firewall settings, which is nice that it comes pre-installed with that as well. Tweaks is something that you will have to install on the side. I'll have a video and a link in the description on getting tweaks installed on elementary OS Freya, as well as elementary OS Luna. It's just gonna be two different commands since they're two different versions of uh, elementary OS, but the process is gonna be the exact same and I'm just gonna throw them both in one video to make it a little easier for people. Now getting over, we're gonna keep working on down. Display is gonna be display. Keyboard's the same way. Uh, keyboard's kind of a good option if you want to get in here and let's say put your volume up, volume down, mute buttons onto your keyboard, maybe screenshot, add a command to that to your keyboard. It's a great thing. Uh, your behaviors on how delays and all that type of stuff works. The layout, if you wanna use just the English keyboard, whether it's the US or the UK version, all other keyboards are acceptable as well. You might need to download them. Uh, as a third party if you happen to be in a country that's not really how do I say it's uh, it's not one of the I guess most focused on countries uh, the reason is just you know developers only have so much time in a day so they need to 
kind of code for the mass majority. And then normally a, a developer from each country will come out and kind of write up a language for their program. And that's how that all works. Uh, mouse and touchpad, you want to come in here and adjust all that. Two finger scrolling is where you can scroll up and down if you have a touchpad with your fingers. Natural scrolling is kind of, I believe it's the exact same thing as what they also, what they call Australian scrolling in the Chrome OS side of things. I'm not exactly what else they call it, but it's pretty much just reverses everything. So I think they call it uh, Australia scrolling in the Chrome OS to try to mimic of the way like toilets work or something. You know, there's one way it flushes and the other way it flushes. And natural scrolling is when you swipe with your two fingers up, it's gonna do up with one way. When you swipe up, it's gonna go down the other way. Depends on how you have it clicked. Tap to click and disable typing, kind of self-explanatory. Uh, power, you might want to come in here and adjust how it, how your system is used when it's plugged in as well as on battery. So you make sure you get the most out of your device. Printers, sound, if you want to come in here and adjust all your inputs, outputs, sound effects, application sounds, and so on. That's how you're going to do that. Bluetooth, uh, online accounts, this is where you're going to come in here and you can sign into all your nice little accounts right here. So Google is one of the main ones that obviously a lot of people will sign into. Facebook, Yahoo, and Microsoft. Actually, they're all the main ones. It's probably going to be Google and Facebook that are going to have more people signing in for. And what that does is when you connect into there, it says on the top, a lot of your stuff can then be easily synced. Mail, contacts, and a calendar. And that's another reason why I'm a big fan of elementary OS, of just how well it integrates third-party accounts into its desktop environment. Now, of course, you can do that with a lot of other Linux distributions, but this just does it really like right out of the box and very user-friendly. It's, it's just enjoyable to do. You know, it doesn't feel like you need to hack around. Elementary OS to me, is it feels like a Linux distribution where I could give my mother and she would understand how to work it and figure it out herself. Because if I handed somebody an XFC desktop with no, no panels on it whatsoever, I can definitely see it being a problem with somebody that's a complete noob. And, you know, for us big Linux users out there, we need to kind of get over this whole, you know, noobs are noobs and so on. And we need to get Linux, not just Linux, all open source platforms out into the market and easy to use for everybody to kind of jump on board because that's, we all know the benefits of open source when, when you jump onto it. Uh, and getting back down to it, uh, about, that's what I went when I showed you all that stuff. Universal access, user accounts, that's where you're going to come in here and kind of change up all that stuff. And that's pretty much it when it comes to your system settings. Now getting back to this top right hand corner, like I say, that's how you turn it off. That's your little main bar, that's your notification bar, your power, your Bluetooth, whether you want it on and off, your uh, network settings, your volumes for not only just your system but as well as the player that you're working with and then right here at the end is going to be the notification that you're going to have of whatever application you might have running in the background so right now i am doing a screen recording and talking to you guys in this video and that's a little application for it the final little piece that i want to talk to you guys about is actually how much i enjoy switching workspaces on this desktop now when i click here this is going to be my multitasking view or workspace switcher when i click that that is what it looks like in the background and I think it just looks like extremely clean very nice to work with I also have it set up where it's on my key command so when I press shift and f2 it moves me left shift and f1 it moves me right or sorry left right other way around so that's how that works and that's gonna be the basic well, it looks like I got a new user get out of here so that's going to be the basic understanding of uh, kind of elementary OS. Again, this is an extremely brief overview. There's a lot to go into it. This is just going to be the start video for a ton of videos to come in the elementary OS side of things. I'm, you know, I'm going to build a tutorial, a tutorial little run of them all right here of how uh, to manipulate and use the elementary OS uh, desktop environment. Uh, you can get a desktop environment on Ubuntu if you're running that or other Ubuntu based desktops and it is called the Patheon, P-A-T-H-E-O-N, I believe it's how they spelled it, top of my head. Anyways, you can go ahead and Google that up, you can find that, it's extremely easy to download, or sorry, install. I believe I actually have a video already, if you go to my channel, it should be one of the most recent videos in comparison to when this, the date of this is published, and you should be able to see how to install that. You can install that on either Linux Mint or on uh, Arch Linux as well as Ubuntu is just kind of the top three. 
Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, as always, leave them below. Please don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.